Chandler Kimber here. And I'm Ashley Winborn. The International Ocean Film Tour has come to our very own Red Cinemas right here in Greensboro, North Carolina. They have come to screen a series of short films that uniquely promote the ocean in all aspects. Most importantly, they share a message to help save and conserve our oceans. Our reporter Megan Wiggins was live on location and able to interview Henry Lestead. He is one of the U.S. representatives for the Ocean Film Tour and a producer who works with many organizations. The origin of life on the planet is the sea. It reawakens in us the mystical and the divine. Hi, this is Megan Wiggins from North Carolina a and I'm with Henry Lissett, and we're here to just talk about the Ocean Film Tour. Could you explain a little bit about the tour and what its message is about? Sure. Uh, the International Ocean Film Tour is in its second year in North America, even though it's volume five, because we started uh, five years ago in Europe. So we travel in seven countries uh, throughout the EU, North and South America, and recently Australia. Um, it's been uh, it, it's sort of been our theme to bring audiences a, a real good diversity of films uh, from surfing, sailing, all sorts of adventure, um, and and really include a good conservation message as well with the action and adventure films. What kind of impact does it have on its audience? Mm. I think what we see mostly, especially in North America, is we see audiences leaving very uh, very satisfied, very excited, very uh, hopeful for the future uh, of ocean health. And they're amazed at the incredible athleticism by the surfers uh, in the films or the uh, really the tremendous uh, adversities that some of these athletes overcome uh, in some of the films. And a good example of that would be uh, the Swiss sailor um, Yvonne Bournian in a film called The Ocean Rider. And he, uh, he takes his... 23-foot catamaran around the world. It's a sports catamaran, not meant to be in the open ocean. And uh, he takes that 55,000 kilometers around the world. So I, I think it inspires audiences and leaves them very satisfied and, and very hopeful for, um, for the future of the ocean health. Yeah. What impacts have you seen so far as a result of the tour? Well, I think most of the impacts come from our education program, which we provide um, you know, during the week when kids are in school. But we offer a free education program where we screen our conservation films. And in the last year, we screened a 20-minute version of a film called um, A Plastic Ocean. It's currently available on Netflix as a 102-minute long film. We have a 21-minute version of it. And the impact on that is just, you know, students just, you know, the wow factor that we are putting that much plastic into the oceans, that we are being really that uh, flippant about about something that's so important and, and really not doing what's best for the environment, not being good stewards of the environment. So the impact for me, it, it's great seeing sold out houses, you know, for, for, you know, the commercial screenings at night. Mm -hmm. But the impact for me is is visiting schools and seeing the, audi the, the student audiences react and send me notes and have the teachers send me notes and keep in touch with me and let me know what the students are doing now that they've seen these conservation messages. And they're just appalled by it more than, more than adults are. Yeah. You know, adults are kind of like, yeah, wow, we're, we're doing some bad things for the environment. The kids are like, 
we're not going to take this. And, and the future is going to be right there with the, with the children that are coming up through middle and high school mm -hmm. that, are, uh, that are seeing these messages, and, and they're just not going to accept it. What are some ways that people can become involved and contribute to saving the oceans and environment? Mm, immediately. Um, just, just stop single-use plastic uh, consumption. You're, um, uh, the, the easiest thing that, that I've been on this kick for a little over a year now, the easiest thing is to stop using plastic straws. Mm -hmm. Uh, plastic straws, you know, there's, uh, there's data out there that we, that we in this country use 500 million plastic straws daily. Wow. Okay? And we all think, and, and this is where the students have the big wow factor. I tell the students this. 500 million is a big number. A lot of zeros. That's, that's eight zeros. It's a five and eight zeros. Um, how do you quantify that into, into volume? It's, it's the equivalent of filling 125 school buses of plastic straws every day wow. is what we consume in this, in this country. There's not a lot of countries in the world that use straws at the at the rate that we do, mm -hmm. and they're plastic, so they're the it's the least uh, recycled um, type of plastic, number seven polypropylene, and it's the least recycled piece of plastic, you know, straw. Mm -hmm. People just throw straws in the garbage can, so they never even make it to the recycling stream. Recycling, though, is the very last, it's the very last vestige of hope. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's reducing the consumption, it's reducing the demand of plastics is where we have to focus our attention. Mm -hmm. We have to stop um, allowing large companies to just flood us with plastic in everything that we buy. Is that difficult? Yeah, it's difficult. We have to change our habits, mm -hmm. and we have to do letter writing campaigns, we have to be vocal, mm -hmm. but we have to stop consuming purchasing and accepting so much plastic that only gets, gets used once. You know, the impact is bringing people in here to to watch the films. They pay their ticket. They uh, they pick up some information from one of the nonprofits that we have, that uh, local nonprofits that will have join us at the screening. They'll, you know, if the audiences can contribute to that nonprofit that's out there doing fantastic work to guard our water supplies and to keep uh, corporations and keep uh, polluters a little more honest and and uh, and so forth. You know, that's sort of what Waterkeeper, the Waterkeeper Alliance, does. They're sort of a watchdog in giving us clean water to drink, clean water to recreate in, um, and uh, they watch out for polluters who are who are doing horrible things to our water supply that takes decades, if not centuries, lifetimes to reverse. And uh, so, I really just hope to inspire audiences to to do everything they can to protect our oceans. Hi, my name is Mark Yagi. I'm executive director of Waterkeeper Alliance. We're an international movement uniting clean water advocates across the globe and focusing citizen action on issues that affect our waterways from pollution to climate change. Pollution from manufacturing, industrial agriculture, energy production, and more is destroying the water we need. Climate change is shrinking our water supplies, increasing competition for this vital resource. The scope and scale of this problem is staggering. Project Osiris will protect one quarter of the world's most vulnerable watersheds in six years, protecting the water from more than one third of the world's population. These water keepers will be on the water tracking down polluters. They will be in courtrooms advocating for environmental laws. They will be rallying community support in town meetings. They will be in classrooms educating our youth. Water keepers hold polluters accountable. Our victories are protecting clean water for millions. Project Osiris will mount a global effort that matches the magnitude of the global water crisis. Together, we can work toward a world that ensures drinkable, fishable, swimmable water for everyone. So when you learn these things about what we're doing poorly to our uh, environment, being bad stewards, we now know what, you know, those are facts. Mm -hmm. So once you know those facts, do you care enough to change? I'm a rolling stone Who oh, am I southbound To follow my heart and be close to you I'm just passing through Million days of late of places On my way down to salt and sun I whistle these tunes 
As long your thoughts are with me, the world will take me on and I'm gone. And I'll be just on the run until the shore is reached. I smell the breeze of the sea and then it, it almost feels if I could take your hand and lay it into mine. And then I would not let go to send a thousand. This was Trajan Douthit, and for more information, visit www.oceansfilmtour.com. Thank you for watching.